edge, running it down on these niggas. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, money, and murder, my nigga. You know how we get it, my nigga. Uh-huh. Still be painting them bitches, my nigga. Ripping that roll over fucking your bitches. Sex, drugs, money, and murder. 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 Niggas, they never go hurt you. Uh-huh. Niggas, they never go hurt you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, money, and murder. Uh-huh. Sex, drugs, uh-huh. money, and murder. Uh-huh. I was got the traps right. On the sand, had to get that. Uh-huh. Ran down on them niggas with a flip back. You ain't never seen none of nigga live like that. I was still getting sex back. Had to fuck around getting them packs back. Yo, it's your boy Bullets Gotti. You know it's been a minute since y'all see me on here doing my content. Um, This video right here we doing, we going to talk about the disrespect that Nas and Tupac gets is ridiculous. And I want to talk about Jay-Z and Biggie on this video too because... I'm going to be honest with y'all. When it come to hip-hop, when it come to, like, when you talk about the goats of hip-hop, and I'm one of these dudes, man, that's like a hip-hop aficionado, right? And a, 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 a kind of a sore of this shit. And <clears throat> when I have dialogues with people when they talk about rappers and they talk about their favorite rappers or they talk about certain rappers, especially dudes in New York, it's like they don't want to give Nas credit. They don't want to give Pac credit. I get it. Niggas is biased to Big E. Niggas is biased to Jay-Z. But in my opinion, Nas and Pac is with Jay-Z and motherfucking um, Big E is when it comes to that goat shit. I think Pac and Nas is the goats because you got to realize, like, Pac was a revolutionary he connected to the streets, and he was the go-to guy when it comes to that street wear, high fashion, and all that. Uptown, nigga, Harlem slash Bronx, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Um, quotables is still, people still quote pop to this day. Let's just keep it real. I'm from the home where the skinny niggas ride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From, you know, niggas giving me daps. Hey, no, he said, he said, niggas showing me love. No, he said, niggas giving me daps, bitches showing me love. Like, certain lines that you hear a lot of rappers done quoted from Pac. Fat Joe, 50, you know, everybody and quoted all their lines. That forever balling, that, 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 that flossing. That, that, just all that shit that you hear niggas saying, Pac was saying that, that money over bitches, you know, M.O.B., that's, that's Pac, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's Pac. That's, that's, he was just the most quotable nigga ever. And I always looked at it like in the game, in the 90s, like the two contemporaries, when it, people always say Biggie and Tupac. Or Nas and Jay-Z. I always say the contemporaries of the 90s um, was Pac and Nas. Like, this is being honest. Because if you look at the the impact of Illmatic, and then you look at the impact of Tupac with, you know, Me Against the World and All Eyes on Me and the, the Seven Day Theory. And then you look at Nas with Illmatic. It was written, I Am, just the impact of his... You know, the time he was in the game, it's just, there's more Nas prototypes. Niggas always, you listen to your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, that everybody that came after Nas all was inspired by Nas. Nas changed the flow in hip-hop, brought New York back when no other rapper brought New York back. Tupac changed the flow of hip-hop, changed the style of hip-hop. Everybody started getting tattoos because of Pac. Pac started all that back tattoos, all that the, the craziness that he was coming with, like the tattoos, the street wigs, just everything about Pac, the bandana, the whole bandana style, how he was wearing it. You know, he really, how you say, revolutionized a lot of shit. And that's why I always say the goats in hip hop is Nas and Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nas is just P 
people don't want to give him his credit, but he's a bigger artist than Jay-Z. He's bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas always say Biggie, right? I don't got no hate for Biggie. I like Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Life After Death was one of the most uh, well-produced, sonically the best uh, album ever to listen to in hip-hop. Um, I remember when Life After Death dropped, it was one of the, the most, like, you know, impactful albums because it was like a movie. It was a movie on steroids. You know, just with the, the, the production that he had on that album from RZA, Havoc, KG, R. Kelly, um, The Hitman, Premier, Easy Mo B, Clark Kent. The production on that album was so solid. It was so solid and it was so legendary. And the, the storytelling was epic, was effortless. It was just so, like, amazing how he was able to fucking, like, talk about certain shit the way he was breaking it down and, and how he was able to, to tell a story and so deep and, and it just... And, and 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 gritty and grimy and dark and and vividly and and flashy at sometimes too, where he could take a tempo and he could he could do the street shit, he could do the drinks for the chicks, the radio club records, like it had all of that in one album, in that two disc album, right? It was just that type of great movie, that type of motion picture. If if Life After Death was a movie, it would be a damn good movie. You know what I'm saying? It would be a damn good picture. If they ever developed that into a movie, the first rap album to develop as a movie, that would be the greatest movie of all time. Because the characters that he was creating, C-Rock and Arizona Ron, and like he was just ahead of his time. I think Life After Death was a better album than Ready to Die. I always think that Ready to Die is overrated. It's just my opinion. It's a very overrated album. I don't think that it, because what people don't really realize is that <laughs> Ready to Die only went gold. Ready to Die didn't go plat. It didn't sell the amount of units that it sold. And Pac said this because when he did the Stay With Me One More Chance, the Elder Bar sample with Mary, Aaliyah, and Faith on the Hook, that's what made that go platinum. That's what made that album sell because he had an all-star cast on that, on that album with a classic DeBarge record. A classic DeBarge record. You know what I'm saying? That's why it did as well as it did because he had a classic DeBarge record. But is Biggie, can you say Biggie is a GOAT? He don't have that much body of work. That's just like if people disqualify Big Pun, right? And Big Pun, in my opinion, is one of the greatest of all time, lyrically. One of my favorites. Capital Punishment is a damn great album. I put Capital Punishment over Ready to Die. If Big Pun doesn't have that much body of work, then Biggie, who was out before him, don't have that much body of work. You cannot put him on the GOAT category. Tupac can be on that because of the body of work and still the work that he put out after he died. Legendary. He had the best, in my opinion, he had the best albums after his death. He had the best projects. Um, the, 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 Until the End of Time was a classic album. Better Days was good. I didn't like the Loyal to the Game shit, Eminem shit, but I did like um, Still I Rise with the Outlaws. I did like um, Pac's Life. That was solid. You know, and like I said, Better Days was solid. And Until the End of Time was was solid. That's with the Trackmasters on, the, on, the, on, on there. That was solid. That was a solid album. So he just had more better work ethic than Biggie. You know, Nas and, and Pac has the best work ethic in hip-hop because... They have a, a like, like I would say like a vault of unreleased music. 
Only the only person that's next to Pac when it comes to unreleased music is Nas. He has more unreleased music than a little bit. He has a total. He has a whole catalog of unreleased shit that niggas have not heard. And that's the thing that I always say that makes that puts Nas on that level like next to Pac because it's about body of work. It's about work ethic. You know what I'm saying? And now when it comes to Jay Z. And I'm going to be honest. Jay Z, in my opinion, and this one, we're going to keep it real. Jay Z, in my opinion, got lucky and he had the bag. If you got the bag, you could put yourself on the same level and pedestal that every other rapper was. But if you really look at it, Jay-Z never had an era. He never was like the guy that everybody wanted to be like rapping-wise. You had guys like, you had a lot of prodigy prototypes to this day. You got a lot of Nas prototypes. You got a lot of Tupac prototypes. You got a lot of Mace prototypes. A lot of rappers is Jada Kiss prototypes. A lot of Jada Kiss clones out here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of 50 cent clones out here, you know, so it's not that many, you know, you would say um, Jay-Z clones. And I'm not talking about dudes that sound like Jay. I'm just saying rappers that like want to be like Jay-Z. Not that many rappers that wanted to be like Jay-Z. Let's be honest. It's not that many. Like, he's never been like somebody that you would hear a nigga will like quote like, yeah, it is. Have is like Cassidy with the ass about me or to bring it out, but bring it out was was Biggie. Bring him out, bring him out. It's hard to yell when that barrel's in your mouth. That's Biggie. You know, like okay, you heard I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler, homie. Yeah, but we talking about niggas like literally trying to be a Jay Z. Like how many rappers you could say that Jay Z inspired that they wanted to be? Nas inspired a lot of niggas. From the fifties, from the the locks to the Griselda boys to every rapping NYC, Mace, Cam, they all tell you they Nas babies, man. A lot of them niggas is Nas babies. They all tell you that. Yo, Nas was that nigga. Like Nas is that nigga. Nas is that nigga. Everybody was Nas babies. Niggas that came. After Nas is Nas' sons. Nas changed the game in New York. Seriously. Illmatic, SNS, shout out to SNS, DJ SNS. He was just on Math Hoffa. And you heard what he said. Illmatic, he leaked the whole Illmatic on his mixtape. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of fucked with the, the numbers, but he still, even though, it was platinum in the streets. The album, everybody heard the album before the album dropped. Illmatic was platinum in the streets. From halftime, it ain't hard to tell. The world is yours. The man was platinum in the streets. You know, so when the second album came, this nigga blew past Golf Brooks, my nigga. Nas, like a lot of people don't know, it was written blew past Golf Brooks. You know, like, Pac always, you know, Pac admired Nas, Nas admired Pac. When Pac was going through trial, Pac was listening to Illmatic. You know what I'm saying? Great minds think alike. If you listen to All Eyes On Me and you listen to It Was Written, Pac and Nas got the same sample. You know? They got that Linda Clifford, you know? Sample on all eyes on me, the same sample. Let's be friends. That's if I rule the world. The same sample, the Houdini, the Houdini <coughs> um friends sample. You know what I'm saying? So Nas and Pac, in my opinion, is the goats of their era, of that 90s era. They are the goats of their era, you know, because of 
the impact that they had in the game and how they was just the most biggest artists at that time. And like niggas always wanted to put Biggie in the conversation, but Biggie, in my opinion, wasn't as big as Nas. What really helped Big was that he had the fucking One More Chance remix, which he had Faith and Mary and all of them, and that's what really solidified him. But if you really go back and you really listen and you really look, like Nas had the biggest impact just off of half time alone. And Illmatic being leaked on SNS mixtape. You know what I'm saying? And him having the streets and having the mixtapes and the radio and all that and being the on a lot of niggas' records without a fucking record deal. Niggas gotta remember, Nas didn't have a record deal. He was on Back to the Grill again. He was on Live at the Barbecue. So Nas' impact was bigger than a Jay's impact. Even though Jay was rapping with Kane and rapping with Jazz O, he still didn't have the buzz, the crazy buzz like Nas had. You know? And then when you look at like Pac and Biggie, no disrespect to the, the, the big, but Pac had a crazier impact than Biggie in the game. I think I respect what Puff and them do. They kept Big alive, Puff and Kim and the Lops. They kept his name alive. You know what I'm saying? And they, they got to prop him up to be this, this GOAT, but Clark Kent and all them, but Big ain't the GOAT. He didn't have enough body of work. Sheik Luke said it best. He didn't have enough body of work. Billy Dan said the best. He don't got enough body of work. A lot of niggas know that Big did not have enough body of work as an artist. He died in 97 with only two albums. One wasn't released when he died, but he died with just one album. And the, the second album came out after his death. So he died with two albums. And one was a classic. Was a supreme classic. Was Life After Death. Ready to Die, in my opinion, was, was very dated. And it's not a, a classic. It's, it's a great album, but it's not a classic. You know? And I think that people, you know, when I listen to some of these niggas, when they talk about Pac and the disrespect that they give on these podcasts, like Math Hoffa and a lot of these other dudes that had these New York platforms, it's like they don't give Nas his credit. They don't give... Pac his credit because Pac and Nas has proved, in my opinion, in hip hop history, has proved that they was they are the superior artists over Biggie and Jay Z. They they most they are very superior over Nas and Tupac is superior over Jay Z and, and, and um Biggie. Just body of work, let alone body of work, let alone the projects they put out. And let alone just the impact that they had in the 90s. Okay? When you look at Biggie and Jay, Biggie didn't have that formula. Puff and even Pac had to tell them, do the records for the bitches. Cause they got the eyes and the ears for they know that they know what can go. Biggie didn't want to do juicy. Biggie didn't want to do none of that shit. Biggie wanted to say hardcore hip hop and stay for the streets. Party and bullshit. That was it. He needed something else. So if it wasn't for Puff, you know Biggie would have never. He would have just been like Jay Rude the Damage and a lot of them other rappers that came out around this time. Now, when you look at a Nas, you look at a Pac, you listen to Nas' album, this man is a music lover. 
Nas, listen to Illmatic. Listen to the production. Listen to the samples. Listen to everything in that album. This nigga knew how to make a cohesive album. Same thing with Tupac. Knew how to make a cohesive project. These men live and love music. That's why I always say they my two favorite rappers. You know, besides everybody else that's on my list as favorite rappers. They are my two favorite rappers just because of the production, the ears of production, and everything. Niggas say, yo, Nas don't got a good ear for beats. He do. Niggas never listen to his whole albums. Just like niggas talk about Pac. Oh, Pac only rap the West Coast. He ain't never took. And Pac was never lyrical. But they never listen to Pac music. They could tell you the commercial shit. They could tell you the shit where he said, enemies. And they never listen to none of his shit besides that. None of his unreleased shit. None of that. California Love, he had the best. He said, he said some shit. As soon as I step on the scene, I'm seeing Hoochie screaming. He said, feeding for money and alcohol, the life of a rich dog. Go born. He said, he said, hold on, hold on. I'm saying, we don't wear chucks, not ballets. Let's ride. Dressed in locs and khaki suits and ride is what we do. Flossing but have caution. We collide with other crews. Famous because we program. Come on, my nigga. He said, busting and bailing. Dog convicted in drugs, selling keys. Got me living the street. Living. He said, got me living the street. Living got me risking felonies. How many niggas want to see me ball? How many niggas want to see me gone? This player hating these niggas. They can't, they can't hate. They hate to see a nigga ball. Forever balling, no ever fall. Live a life of the... Come on, my nigga. Can you see the liquor calling? That nigga Pac had lines, my nigga. Nigga had lines. That's why I say niggas never listen to that nigga unreleased shit. That nigga said, I want money in large amounts. Back of cars that it cars that bounce. Because every dollar counts. Come on, my nigga. It's records and lines that that nigga, you be like, oh, nah, that nigga's like Cassidy said it, man. Pac is lyrical. Niggas wasn't listening to Pac. That's why they always say that Pac's not lyrical. But Pac was lyrical. He was very lyrical. Very lyrical. Just like when niggas talk about Jay. Like Nas. When they go to Jay. Nas had superior, better music than Jay-Z. Jay-Z flow is very still. It's very stale. It could be boring. And it could be very redundant. And he steals a lot of niggas lines. You know what I'm saying? Nas keep every every year he's like LL Cool J. He 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 changes up. You know what I'm saying? He he grows and progress time and time. If you listen to Jay Z currently, listen to his shit currently. Like four for four, the the Carter's album, the the entrepreneur record with Pharrell, the the new shit with D'Angelo. His music has went down and down and down and down. No, it's not no flow progression. It's now it's like he's very offbeat and he's doing more spoken words on the records. He's not flowing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody used to say, oh, Jay got a, ha ha a fire ass flow. But if you listen to his music now, listen to what the shit sound like. It sound like pure garbage. He wasted a whole D'Angelo record. I would better off like hearing Common or Nas or, or Yasin Bey, Kanye, you know, J. Cole or somebody like that on a D'Angelo feature. Hearing Jay-Z on a D'Angelo feature, it was pure trash. Like, we didn't need that. Now, when you listen to Nas and people are starting to appreciate and now understand that he's the superior rapper, you got people that'll still shoot him down and hate on him. You know what I'm saying? You seen the whole shit with Rob Markman and uh, the Simba dude. You know, people gonna hate on Nas. 
But you cannot take away that that man is the best lyricist of all time, the greatest rapper of all time, and he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. Just look at the track record. Look at the, the Magic Projects. Look at the King Disease Projects with Hit Boy. Look at the greatness he did there. Look at him. You can hear Nas on modern day production and still killing it, still ripping it. You know what I'm saying? One of the greatest. The haters will say anything about Nas. They'll say, oh, Nas gonna write his raps. Niggas writing his raps for him. I heard some Nas says, niggas is writing Nas raps. But they favorite rapper, Jigga Man, ain't even rhyming on beat. But they'll say a nigga right, is writing Nas raps. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing with, with these dudes be disrespecting Tupac. Saying all thing. The thing I don't like is that you have people that get on their platforms and they hate on Tupac so much. That they'll say Tupac hated New York. Stupid shit like that. That nigga was from the Bronx. Slash Harlem. Went to California when he was 17 years old going on 18. You know what I'm saying? He spent the majority of his teenage years in Baltimore. And his last years of being a teenager, he moved to, to Marin. In the Bay Area. At 17 going on 18. So. How is he a Cali nigga? And he's from. 160. He lived on 116. Moved from there. Lived on 124th. Lived on 128th. Then went uptown on 170th. Lived out there. Then lived on 183rd. In Walton. But this is a nigga that y'all saying. Ain't, 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 ain't a Harlem slash Bronx nigga. Ain't never lived in uh, hate New York when he and his wife, his ex-wife Keisha was living in Harlem together before he passed away. He was living in Harlem before he went to jail. He was living in Harlem. He was living in Harlem. He had a spot in Harlem. But people will tell you, Pac ain't motherfucking love New York. Listen to these dudes, these podcasting niggas. From New York, the Tax Stones, the Mavs. I don't got an issue with Mavs, but the Zip with the Drips. All these dudes talk about Pac and don't even know the history of Pac. Pac used to chill at the fucking weed spot, Shaka Zulu weed spot, Branson and all that. Stayed in Harlem, stayed uptown in the Bronx, stayed in Queens. Used to be in Queens, South Jamaica, Springfield. You know what I'm saying? Stayed out there. But they'll tell you that Pop ain't never liked New York and hated New York and wasn't no lyrical rapper. You listen to his raps. He was his unreleased shit and, and certain records on his albums. This nigga was spitting lyrical shit. Seven Day Dairy, he killing shit. All Eyes on Me, killing shit. Me Against the World, killing shit. But niggas will say he's not lyrical and he's not a proud native New Yorker. What are we talking about? Not a solid New York generals respected Pac in the streets. No disrespect to Biggie. But niggas took Biggie Chain in Uptown, nigga. Niggas ain't rob Pac uptown. Niggas love Pac uptown. You know? Brooklyn niggas had their issues with Pac. That's why I, I never understood why people get mad with Tech and Steel for working with Tupac. Like, I get mad with Tech and Steel for working. Like, I see niggas, like Brooklyn niggas, they get mad and say, oh, yo, y'all niggas went against Brooklyn because they show love to Tupac on, on the Shining album. Buckshot show love to Tupac. And niggas don't like that, that they show love to Pac. You know? Pac ain't hate New York. He ain't hate New York. 
He just didn't like certain niggas out of New York. That's why I always say Pac is the, the king of both coasts. He's bi-coastal, nigga. He the king of he the king of hip hop, in my opinion. Of both coasts. Nas. The king. Like I said, Pac got three classic albums. Biggie only got one classic, Life After Death. All that Biggie duet shit, Born Again, trash. Now, the features on there was fire, but you keep reusing the same Biggie verses. It's like, this shit is garbage. Life After Death is a classic. Ready to Die is cool, but it's not a classic. Like Life After Death. Nas got three classics, in my opinion, or four. Pac got, I always say, Until the End of Time is one of my favorites. Pac got, and the, and the Still I Rise, in my opinion. But, like, when he was living, he got three. Pac got, um, Me Against the World, All Eyes on Me, and Seven Day Theory. Nas, it was uh, Illmatic. It was written, I am. Three classics. Great body of work. Niggas can hate and say what they want, but Nas and motherfucking Tupac are the goats. They are the greatest of hip hop. Y'all want to try to put Biggie and Jay-Z over them. Bias reasons, I don't understand why. You know what I'm saying, but Biggie was not a supreme, uh, uh, a supreme, uh, 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 a supreme better artist than than Tupac, and Jay Z's not a superior artist over Nas. We talking about niggas that transcend the culture. We talking about niggas, a nigga like Nas who brought New York back. We talking about Tupac who changed the game. When we talk about diss tracks and all that. Both of these niggas had the greatest diss tracks of all time. Ether, hit them up. Come on, my nigga. So these niggas is two of the greatest rappers of all time. When you got two of the best rappers of all, two of the greatest rappers of all time. Got the two best, greatest diss tracks of all times. Come on, my nigga. They superior the best, the better MCs. Fuck this your shit. Fuck all this New York shit. Fuck all this sucking, you know, and, and kissing ass and trying to motherfucking... Make it seem like niggas is is bugging because they ain't going with Biggie and Jay Z, nigga. I'm not. I'm not a biased nigga, bro. I'm not a Jay Z or a Biggie stand. I'ma keep it real. I like Big. I like Jay. He got a couple great albums, you know. But I'm not no biased nigga. Pac and Nas is superior artists over Jay Z and over Biggie. Sorry. Those are the goats. Dead or alive. Those are the two goats. From 94 to 96, they were the faces of hip hop. That's just what it is. From 94 to 96, Tupac and, and Nas was the face of hip hop. In fact, both of them was up for award. And 96. So, come on, man. We got to be real. We got to be real about it, man. We got to be real about it. We got to be real about it. We can't be Fugazi. Nas and Tupac is the greatest of all times in hip hop. And niggas know that. They changed the game. It's what it is.